you know, first of all, summer's here. Uh, second, we've been vaccinated. It is so, <laughs> I just have to keep saying this, it's so wonderful to be out and be back yes, in Vermont. Is. Oh my goodness, it really is. And uh, Vermont, I just got to praise everybody, from the governor to every citizen, uh, the highest vaccination rate, the lowest infection rate, and that means we can all be together safely uh, as we are today. So nice to be in Burlington. Um, and it's also nice to be in Burlington because this week in Congress, I'm going to have an opportunity to vote on a transportation bill. We have been talking in this country uh, for years about the need to pass a significant transportation bill that would provide money to fix our roads, bridges, improve our neighborhoods. And under the new rules in Congress, members of Congress are allowed to designate certain projects to be included into the transportation bill. I supported that. Uh, it's congressionally authorized spending. Uh, it has to be in public. It has to be for a project that meets community needs. I have to put my name on it so it can be subject to review and criticism. And uh, I wanna say that with great pride, uh, I put my name on the project uh, in the Invest America Act that would allow for a funding of an initial phase of the rail yard uh, enterprise project. And under this legislation, in the Invest America Act that we will be voting on this week, $2.25 million would be authorized for the planning, the permitting, the preliminary work. Only the road connected that way. Yeah. 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 We'll let you get. We'll let you get set up. Beat me to it. Go ahead. Yeah. I appreciate it. Do you mind if I just put this? No, that's great. Here. And just uh, while we're waiting, the people who be uh, who are with me and will be speaking today, uh, of course, are Mayor Moreau Weinberger, also Michelle Boomhauer from the Vermont Association uh, Agency of Transportation. Uh, Mark Hughes from the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance and uh, Chapin Spencer, Director of Public Works of the City of Burlington. But as I was saying, this project is what would in former days be called a congressional earmark. It has to be public and I have to put my name on it. It's subject to scrutiny, so anyone who disagrees with me knows what I did and knows why I did it and uh, can act accordingly. But I'm very proud uh, that this congressionally designated sp spending, the first time I've been able to do it in years, uh, is for the rail yard enterprise project. This can be transfor transformative for this section of Burlington and connect us, the rail yard area, with the south end that is vibrant and booming. It's about a project that improves livability for the community. Uh, it has the potential to alleviate traffic in a high residence area, uh, have it come here where it will be much less intrusive, at the same time connecting two neighborhoods that can be vibrant and providing access to the bike path that is so close to us. Uh, transportation projects take a while, but they also take money. And the, the money here is going to be for the planning, the permitting, and the all the hard work uh, that is necessary uh, to be done in order to then continue on a $20 million project that is ultimately what we think the price tag will be. This money quadruples the money that has been available only uh, through the city and the Vermont agency. So it should be a very significant contribution to significant progress uh, towards the rail yard project. So uh, I now want to turn this over to the mayor of Burlington, who's got the easy job of making this all happen. Moreau. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's uh, it's exciting to be with you, and it's ex exciting to be with this group um, this morning of federal and state partners, as well as community partners, who we've been talking about 
um, this project with for, for some time, and, and this is a, a significant milestone today in bringing into reality the Rail Yard Enterprise Project. As the Congressman said, there is broad consensus that the Rail Yard Enterprise Project will advance many shared goals by creating a new network of multimodal infrastructure investments here in the South End. The Rail Yard Air Enterprise Project will, which I'm going to call REP from here, will, will improve the ability of neighbors to live, work, and travel safely. It will enhance connectivity between Pine Street and Battery Street and our newly developed waterfront, and it will advance economic development and make new connections, making uh, our street network uh, more resilient. You know, just standing here and seeing how that truck had to do this kind of awkward turn a moment ago um, uh, is an example of how the South End has really been, um, the transportation network in the South End has been incomplete and unfinished for a very long time. And what this project is about is about getting that transportation network done and getting it right. And it's one of a number of projects here in the South End that we're working on with both the state and the federal government uh, to, to, to get this right. And, uh, and it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's, it's very important. The, the fact that there has been these, this area and farther south in the South End, these sections of uh, the city that are unfinished and the status of the projects that have been talked about there are unresolved has not been good for anybody. It's been bad for walkers, it's been bad for bikers, it's certainly been bad for people who want to get around town driving, it's been bad for truck traffic, it's been bad for our net zero goals um, in that an inefficient, um, incomplete transportation network it doesn't, doesn't, get, doesn't do everything it can to reduce um, emissions, and it's been bad for investment. It's left many um, projects um, uh, on the drawing boards, um, not moving forward because of this uncertainty. We're in a, a period now where we are we are um, bringing that uncertainty and that incompleteness to an end. We're getting it done. We're getting it done right, and working this uh, this formerly known as an earmark uh, investment um, is is a key step in that. That is really going to make sure that this project, which has been you know, I think we have to acknowledge has not gone as fast as we wanted to up until now. So Chapin and I said at a press conference uh, around the corner, you know, nine years ago, this is really going to accelerate this and, and bring this into reality. Um, another just point I want to make about this, and then I'm excited to hear from our uh, from others, is that uh, there has never been a time in the almost decade now that I've been in office when the state, uh, local, and federal partners have been so aligned and working together so well on, on so many issues. And I am confident that this is an example not only of the way in which we're tackling climate and transportation issues together, uh, but that we will be working together to recover from this deep recession um, and working together to tackle other crises of our time, including reversing uh, systemic racism and the historic harms that racism has, has done to our communities. So. Thank you, Congressman Welch. Um, the INVEST Act supports so much of what Burlingtonians know progress demands. Um, in addition to this piece of it, it, it supports investment in rail, the electrification of transportation, and other uh, aging infrastructure structure modernization. And um, it's, a, it's a really exciting time, and we're looking forward to talking more about the partnership with the federal government on other projects in, in the weeks and months to come. So thanks again, thank Congressman you. Welch, and thank you to our partners for being here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And our state partner is the Vermont Agency of Transportation, and Michelle Boomhauer is here to speak on behalf of the agency. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Welch and Mayor Weinberger. It's been um, quite a journey. As the mayor indicated, uh, it's nine years since we kicked this project, project off. I was a director of transportation at the Chittenden County Transportation uh, Regional Planning Commission at that time. And <clears throat> um, so I've been involved in this project for a long time as well. And my last six years at the Agency of Transportation have been dedicated to making sure as state partners that we are bringing the staffing expertise and the resources needed to support the city in making this happen. As the owner of um, the property here in the rail yard, um, we are sort of key um, partners in making sure that we find solutions that keep our rail business 
active, which helps with our greenhouse gas emissions, while really working to problem solve how we create neighborhood connectivity and assure that the residents in the Maple King Pine Street area are not burdened with um, transportation impacts that we have historically seen as issues here in the city and elsewhere in Vermont. So this additional federal funding is going to allow for us to really um, accelerate the permitting and design and right-of-way processes for this project. We are looking to assure that we have a um, resolution on the final environmental document, the NEPA document, which will be required to allow us to uh, allocate federal funding to this project when it's ready to go to construction and the final alignment design is uh, ready to advance. And we're hoping that that will be in May of 2022, uh, just a less than a year from now is what we're targeting. And then the um, Agency of Transportation has set aside in our planning for future construction activities about $20 million in funds that we estimate will be required for this project. And we have um, our top engineering staff ready to assist the city. And we're very much looking forward to this project advancing expeditiously now that we've sort of reached the point where we are going forward. So I'd like to thank the city of Burlington, thank the congressman and all the partners who stand with us today and who will continue to stand with us moving forward to make this project a reality. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Michelle. And from uh, Mark Hughes from the Vermont uh, Racial Justice Alliance, it's really important in America's transportation plans that we begin addressing what we've neglected to address, and that's the impact of transportation projects on racial justice. Mark, thank you so much for your work. Thank you, uh, Representative Welsh, and thank you so much for inviting me out. Um, Mr. Mayor, it's good to see you again. It's always a pleasure to partner with you on projects like this. Michelle, Ch Chapin, all of you. I even met uh, a brother from Iowa that's out there that's actually going to be engineering the project, so that's my homeboy, just to let you know. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, why are we here? Why is the Racial Justice Alliance here? You know, based upon everything that I've heard so far, it's probably hard for you to connect those dots. Uh, you know. The, First, let me introduce uh, my pastor, the New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church, the Reverend Dr. Christopher Von Cockrell, who's here joining us, also a chair of the board of the foundation that's behind the alliance. Uh, we also have our community outreach, Cleophas, here. Uh, one of our directors of community outreach is going to be very significant, uh, very impactful in, in reaching out, continuing to reach out into these impacted communities uh, that this uh, particular project is seeking to avoid. Uh, I think the um, the you know, I want to you know, also introduce uh, uh, Roy, Roy V. Hill II, who's uh, also a member of the board, and then also Rodney Eddins, uh, uh, cultural empowerment and spoken word here in the community, and very uh, powerful voice in the community. Why are so many black people standing behind us? They were not invited. I invited them. I invited them because of what we came here to stand for. Uh, the reason why we're here is, is the reason why we're associated with this project. Despite the fact of me being asked not to talk about it, I'm going to talk about it because that's what I'm here to do. Uh, that's what I'm remaining committed to is, is the Champlain Parkway, which is a 60 year project. We know that that project right now is it, it is headed towards a, you know, the biggest black and brown and poor neighborhood uh, in Vermont. And we also know that it, it is with its design, it will reduce traffic in affluent white neighborhoods in, in the south end by 72 percent. And it will increase the traffic in black neighborhoods by 37 percent. That is why we are here. OK, uh, we didn't come just to uh, discuss the rail yard enterprise in some kind of microcosm or something as if our larger issues do not exist. That is not how we solve issues. What we're here to do is to, to you know, support what it is that our representative has done. This 2.25 million actually quintuples, not quadruples, uh, the amount of money that was uh, already allocated towards this effort. As some of you know about this project, the rail yard enterprise was the original alternative route for this project to avoid the mess that we're trying to avoid. So the question is simple. Um, 
How do we address the realities that uphold the edifice of what produces a situation where a highway project reduces traffic by 72% in affluent white neighborhood and increases traffic by 37% in the, in the most black, brown, and poor neighborhood in the state? Probability on that is like throwing darts or crashing planes. The reason why that exists is, is because we have, we have systems that are failing us systems at the federal government, and I'm calling on Secretary Buttigieg to insert himself in this process. So we have, we have failures at a statewide level. Uh, there's no reason why we should be out for a summer study uh, talking about what we're gonna do about rating equity on these projects right now. We should already be way out ahead of that game. Uh, this whole business about the, um, you know, the screening processes that have just been uh, implemented in terms of the Vermont Transportation Project Selection Project uh, Prioritization pro Process. It is, there is no equity in it. We know that. Uh, there's no reason for it. Uh, I, everybody knows what we need to do. And what, one of the things I challenge uh, the state is, is you know, let's, get, you know, let's get busy, let's lean in. You know, stop hiring all the consultants that are telling you all of the things that you want to hear and lean into this process. Stop dancing around this issue. Uh, what we have here is we have an emergency. And it is a shame that the coronavirus has not taught us at least that. That we're on the other side of that and we're having this conversation where I'm being told not to talk about this larger project. So I appreciate what you have done, Representative um, Welch. And, and I, I do think that it is a small step in the right direction in terms of addressing this issue, um, in terms of putting a Band-Aid over this issue. But at the edifice of what it is that we're dealing with, there are some serious structural things that we need to do to address what it is that is creating these. Whether it's in the Chittenden County, Chittenden County Regional Planning Office, whether it's at the statewide level, and even at the city. And Mr. Mayor, I challenge you, because at the heart of all of this is economics. At the heart of everything we're talking about, I think Dr. King said it best, there can, we cannot address this without a radical redistribution of political and economic power. And as you're preparing for your housing summit, I challenge you to take a step back from that and give us an economic summit. Because what we need to do is we need to sit down and talk about money in this city. So you are welcome for the $2.25 million. And I, I appreciate having the opportunity to come and address you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mark. And now Chapin Spencer, the Director of Public Works. Chapin. All right, thank you. Thanks, thank Congressman you. Welch. Chairman Spencer, Director of Public Works, thanks for having me. I'll be brief given the temperature that we're all uh, enjoying right now. Uh, I wanted to talk really about uh, the foundation that this project is uh, sitting on, which I think, Mark, as you well discussed, really we need to engage the community fundamentally and from the first step. And that this project really has benefited from that. We have had a steering committee. We have had countless public meetings. Uh, we've done two planning processes really to make sure that this project is solidly on the right foot. We've worked with Federal Highway and VTrans on new opportunities such as the planning and environmental linkages program that really helps expedite projects. Certainly there are projects that are federally and state funded that take too long. We are approaching this project in a different way in order to deliver the benefits that you've heard from the mayor and others today sooner. And my department is going to lead this project. It is a top priority. Some of our staff are here today who are going to lead that project. We are very excited to be a partner. I will say and give a shout out to one other constituency group today, and that is the property owners in the adjacent area here. Uh, this project is not going to be easy. There is no current public right of way in this area. So it will really be our successful partnership with the neighbors here that is going to drive this project to a successful completion and I look forward to working with them every day as we've had uh, moving forward. So thank you all very much and uh, look forward to getting this project in the ground. Thank you. I think we have time for a few questions. Yes. Um, for either of you, what could progress on this project mean for other infrastructure projects throughout the area like the I-89 walk by bridge? Well, there's two things. First of all, all local projects, whether it's in Burlington, in Chittenden County, or in Vermont, generally need federal participation. And what is different this year for us in Congress, 
is we actually have a Congress that is intent on passing a significant infrastructure bill. We'll be voting on this bill. We saw that there's enormous progress on a bipartisan bill in the Senate. Uh, so I have more optimism that we're going to get significant federal funding for infrastructure projects. And that means it, it, that bodes really well for communities that are doing the incredibly hard work of planning and dealing with all the issues that range from this specific project to the racial justice issues that Mark raised. They'll have some resources to be able to make progress. So I see this uh, uh, in the context of a congressional commitment uh, to finally getting funds back to our communities and our states to do these projects that are so important to them. I'll just add to that. I mean, the the, the project you re you specifically referenced there is a South Burlington project, and is um, um, I would say, uh, you know, it's not something that this team, uh, the city team, Bur city of Burlington team, is is uh, responsible for for planning. We are we are we make comments on on that project. I do think. There, there are a bunch, however, as I referenced, of, of projects going on here in the South End, some starting as soon as this summer. The rebuilding of the rotary, the Shelburne um, Road Rotary, uh, is going to start in a matter of, of weeks, weeks. weeks at this point. Um, on the other side of the building here, we have uh, work going on right now that is going to bring Amtrak here and has an impacts on the, on the rail yard uh, right over here. We um, uh, are... Um, we have this other federal project, which is a separate, at this point, a separate federal project, the Champlain Parkway. Um, we have improvements on Main Street and uh, water infrastructure in this area. All this, all this work needs to be properly coordinated if we're gonna get it all done, get it all done right, and uh, get it all done in a way that has, um, that supports the, the, the South End and the communities here as, as we go. And this. This federal grant, this 2.25 million, is very helpful in um, accelerating the rail yard enterprise project uh, and getting all that work properly coordinated. And our team right now is working on a schedule that will become, um, will be going to the city council for approval with uh, soon. That will show how all of all of this tens of millions of dollars worth of work is going to be coordinated. And one of the reasons it's so important to get it coordinated is because fundamentally, the city of Burlington ha agrees. Uh, with what Mark was, was just saying and has always agreed with what Mark was, is saying is that this connection from Battery uh, to Pine Street is critical. It's critical for, for the community um, and uh, that was taken out over the objections of the, the city uh, of Burlington back in the 2005-2006 period by the state and federal government. That's why one of the first things I did when I came into office was to create a new federal project. We got support from our state and federal partners uh, nine years ago to start this. And it has, again, it has not moved as quickly as we'd like. Today's announcement, more than anything, is, is an indication that this project is now moving forward. It has alignment with the other levels of government. It has, now has funding from the other level of government. It's very exciting to hear a uh, representative from the state say that her goal is to have the federal approvals in place by next spring. That is an aggressive timeline. Um, and uh, so, so I mean, more you wanted to hear exactly, but th this is about, about coordination with the other projects and this is a very good sign for that coordination. But there, is there any commitment at this point to, to the rail yard enterprise project before the parkway? Do we know how the, what is the city's stance on that at this point with this in mind? Yep, so Cordy, we've been studying that question through this um, uh, updated environmental impact statement um, process that is uh, still underway and that will res result in a, um, uh, a new report and uh, potentially a new record of decision being issued sometime this, this fall. We are working hard with the state and local partners sorry, state and federal partners um, uh, on exactly that, uh, on the issue of how uh, all this work is coordinated. And um, we will be coming forward soon, uh, hopefully, and we don't have it yet or we'd be talking about it today, but hopefully with a schedule, a coordinated schedule um, that uh, gets all this work done and gets it done in a way that is best for the community. And we'll, sorry, will the council have to approve that schedule? Will that be something that goes to them for I believe, tell, tell, remind me, Chief, exactly what our thinking is there. Sure. Uh, 
Our plan is definitely to bring this to the council, ultimately uh, the council's decision of what they choose to do with it, but the council does have fiduciary authority to approve construction contracts. So really what we're doing is trying to lay out a landscape that the community and the council can understand and that the council can then uh, work with us to progress these projects through it in an orderly fashion. Anything else before expire? Well, I'm happy to answer that question, but I don't want to keep everyone standing here if there are other questions. Yeah, I'm happy to do that in a second. Any other questions for, for this group? That's assembled. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.